Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Here we got a Navi Tronic PGU-1. It's a path guidance unit. I bet this is for a um, boat or a ship, depending on what size you are playing around with. So, uh, well, it's just a, an active uh, rudder set up so you set up the the rudder for for the angle you want to steer your your boat and then it's going to hold that for you i think that is how it works we don't have a lot of information about this um, unit i can't google anything about this so it's probably pretty old look at the Indicators here that will be seven segment the uh, high voltage neon discharge segments. I like those a lot, so that is already a pretty good score. If the rest don't work, and we got some really big heavy finger screws here for mounting in your boat, probably a little sounder and a magic three-way switch okay so Navitronic is a company from Denmark Aarhus uh, we got of course a mystery connector that goes to the HGH1 whatever that is and what I think is a little bit funny is to see a mains entry connector really that is a little bit strange and of course the fuse and all that kind of stuff and here we got handwritten serial numbers and whatnot and it looks very very corroded oh all this is falling apart so i think oh, what we need to do is let's open first and have a look at the inspection round before power up let's look a little bit inside this unit I mean, it's really, really built. Beautiful. I still haven't figured out what that switch is doing on the side. I find it a little bit weird. All the wires goes to the power supply. So how is, how is that possible? What is that doing? I'm probably going to figure that out. And this little thing here we saw on the side, yes. I believe that is a little sounder, so we get some beepity beeps. And that is of course the, the meter. And we got also light in the meter, so that is really nice. Everything here is with connectors and stuff. There's no CPU or anything intelligent in here, but it's just counters and Things like that, really. Everything is made using discrete logic and gates and what not. And the, the one with the highest date code is 85. One of those. So that will be 85. So I believe this unit is from 85. So here's the one of the two display driver boards there are two identical boards here and as we see we got quite a lot of uh, digits right so we got seven digits times two so maybe that is the the actual course and the wanted course probably something like that this is what i expect it will be and here we got an ds8880 and that will be seven segment high voltage uh, drivers uh, with the current constant current output where you can uh, configure the current output and that is perfect for driving high voltage near discharge tubes so that's exactly what they are for and they take four bit um, input and here we got seven um d flip-flops the in each of these packages uh, the 74 ls 174 that's actually six the d flip-flops with clear in each of the packages and they are connected 
as counters. So this is what they're doing. They're just counting and driving the seven segments. So everything here just generate count this and count that kind of signals. Also, mains input is a little bit interesting. Nice protection. So mains input fused goes to a little relay kind of box here. Right? And then mains goes to the transformer. But there's also two thin wires going to the connector down here. And it says 5 volt on the relay. So I bet when I power this up, nothing's going to happen. And then we need to input some voltage from some external. So probably this connector needs to go so to some external thing. And then that remote voltage tells this unit to go on and off automatically. Because there is no on-off switch on this unit. So there's probably some uh, rotor control, um, rotor drive, rotor sense kind of stuff. And uh, that you need to switch on. And then you'll turn on your guidance um, unit, right? Or it's the other way around, maybe. I don't know. Well, we'll we'll see when I power this up. And uh, then I need to trace down the signals here. And now, other than that, we got only a few wires going to that connector. So that is probably um, some analog uh, digital inputs. Uh, we'll have some switches on the rudder to tell if we need to go up and down, right? Or are we going in the right direction or not? And they just go into that connector, I guess. And some of them probably go via this uh, here on the front panel. A and B probably we've got some different settings and uh, how aggressive is the gain, obviously. I have no idea really, but I can't find any manuals or anything. So I'm not able to, to run this anyway. But I feel that we should definitely try and power it up and see if it is alive. It looks quite safe. There is no bad corrosion on the electronics it's of course super super corroded on the outside but all the inside stuff is uh, quite all right yes exactly what happened absolutely nothing so i need to activate that uh, relay all right so let's try and do this again means voltage in and then of course nothing happens let's uh, plug in i believe this will be the two wires for the relay and clickety clickety clack it uses 12 watts and there's a nice display light here hmm that's a little bit boring, but it was looking so nice when we powered it on. Let's try and power off and on again and see. Yes. So we got some. So this is just random stuff that is in the display when we power it on. All right. And then after a little while, okay, we got some. Reset kind of stuff. This is probably the update, right? Yeah, that is the... Ah, oh, that is the... So that is what it's doing. Display off, bright, dim. Okay, so... So this goes to the power supply and what not. So now I am a little bit stuck. Now we'll try and go and uh, measure what's going on in there. Oh, I think it's only like three or four wires that's actually doing something in that connector. Uh, everything else is free. And maybe I can, I can input some signals and maybe it's doing something. But of course it's defect. Hmm. Well, well, so here's a little bit interesting thing. We got four wires. I connected uh, two orange and two yellow. 
to the four wires uh, of the connector, right? And uh, at power up, uh, it just clears the display. And those two, the yellow ones, it's actually responding to some stuff here. And the two orange ones, uh, they're, they're not even inputs or outputs. They appear to be completely floating. So, so far, I don't know what they're doing. It seems like they're doing absolutely nothing. So I can leave them away. So we have a some sort of a special interface here with two wires and exactly what that is doing, I don't know yet. But what I've done is I have two signals here, five hertz and 10 hertz. And then I put the five hertz and 10 hertz on those two wires. Ooh, look at that. So we got some stuff going on here, right? The display is responding to that. And then kind of nothing, right? So if a if I go away again, so a signal on, on that one seems to have a like an update kind of thing. So this is maybe the latch or update something kind of thing, right? So if I put data on the other one, it's the same kind of thing, but it didn't change 7F0, see? 7F0. See, that didn't change anything. Oops. So let's let's try and manipulate both of them at the same time. Ooh, we got some counting this and that. See what's going on here. So we got data and latch of something, and then suddenly I just also hit the the bit for the you see <laughs> for the buzzer. So yes. There is a serial interface on those two that goes straight to all the, the latches that is doing everything here, like the updates of stuff. So what this is, it's only the readout unit. It's not doing anything intelligent here. When data is coming from something else, and it, it, there is no intelligent things in here, right? Only lots and lots of counters and latches also here counters and latches so you need to update the stuff on those two wires so that's all this thing is a nice and funky readout unit <laughs> oh you gotta see this here's what i'm doing i got one hertz on one of the inputs and at the moment 518 hertz on the other one <laughs> and then I play with the frequency 518, 19, 20. So it's a matter of how many pulses you have on the other one in relationship to the to the clock latch. See, and if I go back, see, let's see if it's stable. D363. So that is uh, 622. So I go one up and then I go one back. You see? It's the same. One up, one back. So there is a pulse counting kind of interface where I can control whatever is uh, read out on those uh, <laughs> digits here. All it takes is to go and figure out exactly how this works, right? So there's a way to use this for something cool. Other than that, I really don't know what to use this uh, unit for. I've been, uh, of course, I'm super happy about those uh, digits. Uh, those are absolutely fantastic. And also the transformer is both um, high voltage and low voltage. Oh, let me turn this off and then show you. We got a, um, what have we got? A 9 volts and 150 volt and a 24 volt uh, winding. So, so super, super useful for Nixie clocks, for example. So that is definitely a keeper if I don't figure out what else to to use this for as it is. Uh, the case is super, super rotten, very corroded everywhere. And uh, that is really sad because it's kind of a sexy case you could really reuse the the case you could also sand this file this or even sand blast it and then reuse but that is just too much work uh for me uh i can also you know you know make a new front plate and all that kind of stuff i think it's the same kind of with as modern equipment so 
yeah, I'll maybe I'll stock it for a little while and then I will see what's uh, <laughs> what's gonna happen to this one. Look at how they mounted the display ports here with a screw like that to make them stay in. And this piece of plastic here is probably pom or nylon. And then we got a really nice connector here. Got to see the Bigman displays. They are so cute. I really love those. So you can see, you can see the Bigman here is called SP333, and this is the SP332 for two digits, right? And this is of course a three digit. So this little connector here is the anode supply. That is a common anode supply for all the digits, and because of the drivers, uh, that is a current mode driver that is connected to each of the cathode segments. And of course, we've got four bit inputs from each of the data ledgers. So it's a really beautiful Beckman display here. And it's even with the original sockets, Beckman sockets. How nice. And now we know that the Beckman displays works. So that is definitely a keeper. And this display here is quite, um, the, the display driver board here is actually easy to uh, reuse exactly as it is because it's quite easy to look up the 74LS174 uh, uh, data latches. It's also easy to follow those lines and see, ooh, this is data, this and this is data, that, and all the clocks, they go here and they are connected to that. And then those signals here go to the next one there that is doing and so on. So this way you can easily trace the tracks to the connector and then reuse the displays exactly as they are. Oh yeah, by the way, you see here the, the anode. I don't know if that is possible to show. Yes, here we go. So there's a room for each of the individual anodes and they go to a pad here, a little springy connection and that goes to the glass. And it is because the glass is coated on the inside with a um, transparent but conductive, weakly conductive surface. So you can multiplex those So you by turning on this anode and then you select this display, right? So you can connect the cathodes in parallel and this way drive the displays in multiplexed mode. But in this case here, as you can see here, they're just parallel to this resistor and this is the common anode. So they're not multiplexing. And that's also why they got seven individual, um, seven segment drivers. That's because we're driving in non-multiplexed mode. So that's the DS-8880.